Good day, good day everyone, and welcome to this uh, video about submarine changes part 2, because I am an idiot. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I've just recently chased um, my recording software, because my old one kept crashing on occasion, and um, if the ones who watched that video might have noticed it just ended kind of abruptly. That was not the plan. <laughs> I, want, I have the entire video uh, narrated and um, yeah, my program just decided to cut off there and I didn't catch it in prose production, so I am a fool. My apologies for that. So hereby, the next part, I will put the entire video in here with this star as well. There will be a timestamp in the below down there. You can press and then you can go to the parts where you left off if you watched the entire previous video. Um, if you did, thank you very much. Um, also, um, I didn't properly show off my submarine games because I told you I played around 2,000 submarine games. I didn't really show it off, so let's uh, let's do, let's change it here. Uh, these are my stats, both stats and numbers. You can see my stats over here. Uh, I have been a beta tester for the game, so I have uh, quite a few games on my, under my belt, and uh, I've did I've played every single iteration of the submarine testing phase as well uh, extensively because I want to make sure that I knew what I was, talk was talking about before I talk about things. So my submarine games are here, 2,901, even more than I anticipated. So um, yeah, I've played some submarines, I have a win rate of 60.77 with subs, and uh, well, the numbers are right here, um, feast your eyes. Um, also a little note, um, recently there was a video made by Carbine Carlito about the Kitakami world record. Um, I played that game, They never, he never mentioned my name or my channel or anything and he knows me so I'm a bit disappointed but I'll notice it here myself then um, if you want to see that world record video I'll try to remember to put a timestamp or something up here to um, make sure you can uh, go there um, that is of course the one I did it on stream uh, played with Thunder Shot together we just were having some fun just having fun with on, on the map with the Kitakami and the uh, Shouten Leo and um, yeah, numbers just kept going up so, it wasn't planned or whatever. I mean, how do you plan a world record? I don't know. Uh, I did try it once. I once tried to plan a world record with a Z31, because it seemed possible. Um, let's just say that ship's awful. <laughs> that ship is awful, and I failed. But it's a challenge for you. Try to beat the world record done, uh, damage done in a Z31. That's a challenge for you guys. Let, let me show you who's better than me, because there must be a few out there. Let me know in the comments if you do it, if you made it, because that's awesome. Just try it. Just try it. It's fun. Anyways, without further ado, the rest of the video will continue from this point forth. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you watched the first one, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. Enjoy the rest of the video. And if you would press that like button or subscribe button for me, that would help a ton. So thank you very much if you would. Anyways, let's continue on the video. Good morning, good morning guys. How are you doing? How are you doing? Ooh. I had a bit of an um, interesting day yesterday. Interesting evening to be said, because I was looking back at my um, YouTube. I've been um, trying to... Um, Improve that. I've been I've been working on that, and I was looking for my uh, for my stats. Oh, can I can I pull it up? Let's see. Can, if, I'm not sure if I can pull it up. Let's see. Uh, where to go? Uh, there. Yes. Can I open a browser? There we go. Yeah. There we go. I have uh, this thing here, and uh, there we go. There. Um, yesterday I was looking through my uh, my YouTube. To see what I uh, what I did, uh, there's this touch. I will I'll translate. Um, and I was looking at how my videos were doing. And uh, well, I didn't have too many views, of course. Uh, pretty small. Don't don't. I'm not very consistent. So five views, twenty views, uh, th twenty three views. To note, this bomber crew. I spent the whole day making each of the videos, and uh, five months, twenty three views, twenty views, six months. That doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, I went and posted a funny thing about Wargaming Gaming ninety six views, and then I came. And I saw my my latest video about Solo Warrior, right? Solo Warrior, YouTube, uh, YouTube 501. And that was my best video ever. 206 views, that is really insane. In seven days, that's really, really good. And then I looked next to it. And I saw Pal Worlds. 17 second video, 2.2k. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. 
that's just me just turning on the record turning off the record pasting it and putting the title under it that's it <laughs> i mean it's only 17 seconds it won't earn me anything but um i mean i got 2.2k views on a vid which is insane but i'm more proud of this one because this is something i actually worked for and actually I, I also edited this one poorly but i did edit it <laughs> so it kind of a cool day kind of a cool day yesterday i was kind of happy that i saw all those um for me at least big numbers 2.2k 2 206 views in seven days insane and the best part for me at least for me is that there was uh, i believe uh, more than five likes on it which is for me the, the big deal. I, I, want, I want the likes. The likes are important to me because those help my channel most. And um, the views are cool. And the views are nice. But I do need those likes. So um, if you want to help your 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 your, your local uh, your local uh, YouTube streamer, video maker, guy and guy, um, press that button. It, it helps out a ton. And we, we would love you to do that. It's only one button press away. Anyways, uh, there's going to be a lot of changes. Submarines ASW. We've seen probably most of it. But let's have a quick look about what this all is about. Turn up music. I'm not sure how loud this will be, so I'm trying to minimize and we'll turn up the volume later. Yep. Big changes that you've been waiting for are coming. We always do our best to listen to our community. We are aware that there are some pain points and we've already started the process of solving them. As part of this, Captain, get ready for some impactful changes to submarines and anti-submarine warfare in mm -hmm. World of Warships. I mean, that's so cool. Our overall aim is to make the interactions between different ship types more intuitive and straightforward. Mm -hmm. In particular, our goal has been to implement additional countermeasures for all battle participants. That's why we've slightly changed the functionality of anti-submarine defenses of surface ships. The Venezia and Hindenburg branches, excluding Montecuccoli. As well excluding Montecuccoli? Why? What's about Montecuccoli? Let's have a quick look. Um, that is Italiano. Montecuccoli, you, why are you excluded? You are tier 5. Uh, you do also have submarine uh, surveillance, is that what he's talking about? As well as Prince Olgan and Admiral Schroeder have received depth charge airstrike in place of the depth charges they were previously equipped with. Depth charge airstrike, okay, so let's have a look here. Um, so you have the normal drop down depth charge at tier 5. Let's see what, what, what the tier 5 cruise is about. Uh, 5 cruises, uh, not it, you know, just all of them. So we got um, airstrike. Not an airstrike, of course. Kokori. Not an airstrike. You. One airstrike. Okay. So it's not like he's an exception. It's actually the exception who has no airstrike. Because these seem to have... Uh... Oh, this one. So it's the third one without without depth strike. With airstrike. Depth strike, yes. Another one. So there is a bit of variety in which ones have... Um... Air, air drop bombs or which one have uh, over the side drop bombs but that's a bit of a 50 50 split so okay it seems like it's kind of normal that roughly 50 50 i think a little little i think a few more have uh, air strikes but there is also normal ones in there so okay fair enough i mean don't know why he would be accepted but from the rest but that's fine Tier 5 and 7 battleships, as well as Ohio, Thunderer, Jean Bar, and Jean Bar B, have received an increase in their depth. This was so necessary. They really needed this. This was super too that they didn't have to, to begin with. Although Musashi is not included here. Depth charge airstrike range. Depth charge airstrike and tier 5 through 7 battleships and cruisers now has a shorter cooldown. For tier 5 and 6 battleships and cruisers, the bomb damage was slightly reduced. This mm -hmm. means you can utilize depth charge airstrike more frequently, but with less damage per use. Mm -hmm. The Venezia, Zao. That doesn't really matter because most times you want to focus on the fires and floods. I mean, the damage is nice and definitely useful, but there's not a lot of HP on the submarine, so you don't need insane damage. But the fire and the floods will actually destroy the submarines mostly. So that you can launch them more often means therefore get more procs of fire and the flood is uh, really awesome. So I think it's overall buff. 
and also more chance to hit because if you miss, you have to wait so long. And Yodo branches have received the submarine surveillance consumable in a separate slot, which was previously available only to submarines. Mm -hmm. I still really need to get used to that because I <laughs> sail in and I'm like, why are we being submarine surveilled? There's no submarine around. And I press my submarine surveillance button if it's on off cooldown. And like, oh damn, there's a cruiser block, isn't it? And yeah. <laughs> Happened a few times. I need to learn that. That 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 will take some that will take some practice. Despite the changes to the anti-submarine defenses of surface ships, we want to maintain the current combat capability level of submarines. Mm -hmm. To facilitate this... That's really important because the, the, the combat effectiveness of submarines is kind of low. Because they're, they are inherently reliant on torpedo damage, and torpedoes are slower than shells, uh, oftentimes when you spot something, uh, your allies will kill it before you get there or before your torpedoes get there. So you need the submarines to still be able to do uh, enough in the battle because they're already on a pretty low impact scale mostly most of the games if if the teams don't completely suck everything is dead before submarine torpedoes arrive usually that's if the if the team is pretty good so uh it, it already has a pretty low combat impact uh, all those kind of course spot and do things like that but it's mostly slower than most dds so the spotting is um i mean it, it's less dangerous because you can't go underwater on the other hand, it's hard if, if an enemy team is running away because it just can't keep up. So, yeah. Here are the balance changes we've made to submarines. The working principle of the hydrophone consumable, which is available to all submarines, has changed. From now on, it'll allow you to instantly highlight ships within range, regardless of terrain and... E this is something I dislike a lot. Because, one, there is this little nice animation that shows that the ripple effect of... Oh, nice, if the... This, uh, the hydrophone would actually, uh, as it did before, just show enemies when that ripple arrives because that's the, the sound speed. So now it instantly spots them, but also ignores islands, which I really hate. I, I, I don't want more things go through islands, I want less things go through islands. So I'd, I'd love for it to not go through islands, just like the uh, radar and hydro also should not go through islands, in my opinion. Even if they are behind island. It, it would allow for so much more complex gameplay, so much more skilled gameplay if people could just hide behind island and not get radar or hide road, you know? Also, proxy spotting should also go, not go through islands in my opinion, but... I mean, sure, guess. You can activate it while surfaced, as well as at the periscope or operational depths, but it'll only spot the ships that are at periscope depth or on the surface. The consumable functionality has become more similar to hydroacoustic search and surveillance radar. It will make it more dip. Yeah, something what I didn't like. <laughs> this is more similar to that. I, I like the fact that you actually could have people hiding behind islands and you couldn't see them. To make it more dangerous, to make it more... To make it more tense, to make the battles more tense, because you do not know if there's behind the island an enemy or not. Now you just press one button and you know, because, I mean, you'll see every ship that, there, that, that could be there. Through islands. I, I don't like through island things. Difficult for submarines to shotgun surface ships by firing torpedoes in immediate proximity to them, as it will be more challenging to track moving targets while underwater. When submarines use their hydrophone to detect ships, static silhouettes of these spotted ships will appear for a short period and then disappear. Ships located behind terrain, an island for example, will be displayed as a short static flash without a silhouette. This means that hydrophone for submarines has become more of a defense tool rather than a tool for attacking. Yeah, I understand about the, the about the shotgun effect, but shotgun effects also because you always have a uh, almost always have a either a carrier or a DD around the spots for you. You don't need this tool for that. You can use it, but you don't need it. And on many uh, many submarines, it, that you only get limited amount of these uh, hydrophones. So these get completely shafted by this because it normally was already bad that they had limited amount of them, but now they're also oh, only one percent of the use is remaining. So it's really a useless ability if you don't have infant of these. So with this change, it's only one second. I think that every submarine should have an infant amount of them, or at least ten plus of these. At least ten plus, because only one ping once in a, well, one momentary flash. You know, it needs more. And it takes away the whole effect of just stalking your prey. Which is a fun thing. And it, not just for shotgunning. It's just also a fun thing for on, on range to see. Can I go up to the surface or not? You know? 
We've also added a collision warning for submarines. Yeah, this is useless. <laughs> this is absolutely useless. It makes noise, but you can't see him. You know it's close to you, but you can't do anything against it. I prefer this was not there. I prefer this was not there. That you could just action that you actually could ram an enemy submarine without knowing it would be there. I like that part of it. This is I I don't see uh, I don't see a reason for this to be here. If they are submerged and another submarine approaches within a two kilometer having this makes sneaking past enemy submarine a lot harder, but also removes that whole gameplay of sneaking past enemy submarine, you know. And that's a fun thing to do. So I think this is not I don't think this is necessary. I don't think what the benefit is of this. What what is the benefit of this? You don't see him, you will never see him on the water like this. And yeah, you know he's in range. Woohoo. Now what? You can't do anything anyway. So you can use your submarine surveillance, you can use your um hydrophone, see what if the surface on the water. But you don't want to use that at this range because it's too close for your two piece to home in anyway. So this, I this is just a waste of resources for wargaming because there's no there's no point to this. Radius. This warning will appear even if the enemy submarine has not been spotted. In this case, the warning will disappear as soon as the enemy submarine leaves the two kilometer. It, it, it just. What does this do? It do, does make you press the submarine surveillance button if it is off cooldown, or just screws up the enemy's plan to get past you or your own plan to get past the enemy yeah i'm, I'm not a fan of this I, I, I don't see what what this brings to the table i don't see it there's one one more way in which the sneakiest of sneaky ships lose a way to get past each other which is a fun thing to get past each other and the, the, the whole dynamic of not knowing where the enemy is is fun and this is well removing that fun I don't know about this one. No, I don't like any it. direction, including by surfacing. The warning always remains the same, no matter how many submarines are in this radius. In addition, we've improved the turning circle radius of all submarines. Yeah, I noticed this, uh, especially when I uh, try to ping things on the water or above water. They, they, the, the turning radius is a lot higher, which is the biggest weakness of a submarine. I like that it was kind of a skill thing, but now it's just, uh, yeah, a bit, a bit too easy, I think. A bit too easy to boost their maneuverability and survivability. This will be especially important considering the changes to anti-submarine defenses of surface ships. On average, the turning circle radius will be reduced by approximately 20%. This also makes hitting your depth charge a lot harder because we can turn a lot faster in a shorter period, short time. I think this makes it more frustrating to hit submarines. I think that's what it is. Because it makes it easy for submarines to, to escape, which is sounds interesting, but on the other hand, I don't think they needed that. I don't think they needed that. That they're, they're maneuverable enough, and it's good to have a weakness, and having a hard time turning is a weakness, which I think was good as is. So I don't think they needed that buff, even though the anti-submarine anti -submarine wolf is stronger. I think it would be fine without that. Because you have to play around this. And also the enemies, who want to hunt you down want to go in from your sides because that's your weakest spot so if they can they are played you and the, the, the whole dynamic around it was fun but now if you turn faster and easier then yeah it kind of loses that 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 go for the weakness go for the side thing you know and finally we've added some effects to two signals sierra bravo now reduces the cooldown time of the submarine surveillance and hydrophone consumables by 10 percent while the x-ray papa uno one signal now increases dive capacity by five percent that's really good to get some to get some flags help although the other two flags you can't really get from any drops so yeah they're gonna be expensive uh it's kind of stupid that it's on, on those flags but you know they have to put it somewhere um yeah yeah these are it's good only the first serious changes to submarines and anti-submarine defenses of surface ships. We'll continue to implement changes in future game updates, and we'll keep listening to our community. Please do leave your feedback about these changes in comments under this video. You can read more about all the changes in a dedicated article on our website. Prepare to dive, Captain. Prepare to dive. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I, I like the nerfs they gave submarines, and I don't like the buffs they gave the submarines. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. Because I like my submarines, I love my submarines. Submarines are fun to play. There. But um, 
Yeah, I don't think they need the buffs. I don't think they need the buffs. The turning circle, they don't need it. Hydrophone through items, they don't need it. Um, I do like the hydrophone at least to have at least one. As well, these have two picks. And the ones with limited amount of them to get more. Because it's really a lot less useful. So, there's that. And the, the, the proximity detection is just absolutely ruining gameplay. <laughs> I, I, don't see any, I don't see any benefit to that. Not a single benefit of that. That is outweighing the downside. Of spotting and for, for just spotting reasons. Yeah. But the nerfs, the, I mean, the, the buffs to um, and the submarine warfare, especially on those higher tier battleships, I've been whining about it a lot. Uh, that they missed the Musashi in that is really stupid. That's something they really should have gotten. But they didn't, so yeah. Uh, so overall, mediocre. Mediocre change. The, 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 that they changed it is good. That they looked at it is good. But I'm not a fan of how they changed the how they buffed the submarine basically. What they did to the submarine itself, I'm not a fan of. What they did to all the ASW and stuff, I'm a fan of. Yeah, because the submarine got a bit too many buffs, which you didn't need, and that removes. If, if you buff a ship too much, it becomes too too powerful and too easy to play. And easy to play is boring. You want to have some skill involved, you know. So that's at least my two point, my two cents.